Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> okay, uh, great to be back. Hope you had a good week so far. Uh, we'll continue with our learning from Acts. We've completed 10 chapters. Now we move on to another phase altogether of uh, you know various things that are taking place uh, in the Church of Jerusalem and around. So let's pray and then get into it. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the understanding that we have received so far. Lord, as we take up Acts chapter 11, we pray, Lord, you, that you would speak to our hearts, Lord. Uh, deep insight in the things of God. And Father God, I also just pray for myself that you would give the words that uh, you would give, Lord, the uh, revelation, O oh God, to be able to share and uh, bring a time in, uh, bring a word in season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Acts chapter 11 is where we are at right now. What happens in Acts 10 uh, is that Peter takes the gospel to Cornelius. Yeah. Oh, Ravli has raised her hand. Uh, Ravli, did you want to ask anything? We can see your hand raised. Yeah, maybe by mistake. Let's get back to Acts 11. So we saw that uh, Peter goes and preaches to Cornelius. What is the uniqueness of Peter visiting Cornelius? Yes, missions. Okay. Cross community. So he's gone to another community of the Gentiles. A Jew ministering to the Gentiles is for the first time. That is what is special about Acts chapter 10. We should never forget about it. How did God lead him to do this? Through a vision. And uh, did God make a divine connection with, uh, with Cornelius? Yes. Even Cornelius had a vision, right? Like uh, an angel came and spoke to him about what is going to take place. So uh, that is what happens. And now we see that Peter is explaining his experience to the leaders in Jerusalem. We will see that entire explanation from verse 1 to verse 18. So he goes up to the apostles and brethren who were in Judea they heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter came up to Jerusalem, those of the circumcision contended with him, saying, you went into uncircumcised men and ate with them. Because Peter, as a Jew, went and ministered, there were some challenges. Like he was questioned, how could you do this? Because Jews would never go and fellowship with the Gentiles. So he's being questioned. Then Peter explains. He explains the entire phenomenon and, uh, you know, he explains how the Holy Spirit was poured upon them. And he says, who was I to try and stop what God was doing? He needed to let the Jews know that it was God who was doing this. It was not him. He was only led by the Holy Spirit to go where the Spirit was telling him to go and to minister to whom the Spirit was telling him to minister. So Peter had to give an explanation and he goes about sharing in detail the things that took place. So Acts 11 verse 12, he, he shares that the Spirit told me to go with them doubting nothing. Remember the Gentiles when they called him? He just went because the Spirit told him. So he's making it clear for uh, those who are listening. Then could someone read from verse 15 to 17? Acts 11. And as I begin, and as I begin to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. Then I remember, remembered that the word of Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If therefore 
God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on on the Lord Jesus Christ who was I that I could withstand God okay so he's providing an explanation and he's saying that the way the Holy Spirit fell on us it fell on these people so what does that show it shows God's acceptance of the Gentiles so when God is not withholding how can we you know come in the way and stop the gospel from being preached to the Gentiles so that's his explanation he had to make it very very clear to uh, the leaders in Jerusalem the people in Jerusalem that it was not out of his own will but by the will of God that he ministered to the community of the Gentiles now we will move ahead from there and thank God when uh, the Jews heard this they agreed with him so verse 18 we'll quickly read verse 18 do not boast against the branches but if you boast remember that you do not support the root but the root support you uh is it verse 18 oh, sorry no. I was in Roman. when they heard these things they became silent and they glorified god saying then the god has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life okay thank God once he explains to the Jews they understood and they agreed with him and they said it is God who has granted repentance to life to the Gentiles so the understanding is now coming to the Jewish people also that ministry is going to be done for the Gentiles as well we have to accept it we can no longer say that Jesus is only for us and you know his uh, sacrifice is only for us we need to literally start moving now towards the ends of the earth and it will begin with the next community which is the Gentiles now also let's consider this when Peter was sharing uh, to the Jews about what exactly happened he says that God spoke to him and said, you go doubting nothing. And he had this vision of uh, uh, animals come down from uh, heaven. So he had an experience. But Cornelius also had an experience. Cornelius also was encountered by God. When God spoke to him, Cornelius, all your arms, your giving, it has come before me as a memorial. Okay, and go, there is a man, Simon go to his house send some men to bring him over so there were two people who had encounters and God communicated with them so this is something for us to think about usually uh, when when someone sharing their experience right if there is another concurrent you know like if, if we can say that another person also God spoke to it validates what uh, one individual is sharing as an encounter or as a vision or a dream and particularly in matters like this because it's a public matter if I had a dream and I'm sharing it with my family member that's another issue I can share they will believe me and you know it's it's a small thing but this is a bigger matter when he is speaking to the Jewish people about how God spoke to him and how God also spoke to Cornelius. So whenever there is, uh, there, there are more than one person confirming it, it's concrete. Otherwise, what happens? Somebody can come and they can say, oh, I had a vision, I had a dream, and the dream, it happened like this, it happened like that, God said this, God said that. But there's no way to validate unless something else is happening which is confirming that God has spoken or God has given a dream to a particular person because we must not get lost in it a lot of people tend to do that they say oh I went to heaven I saw this and God told me this wonderful but how can we validate in this case there are two people Peter God encounters him tells him what to do Cornelius also 
same thing so both of them together can validate that it is god so we must not get sidetracked by one of uh, you know dream vision that people come and they start talking and you know uh, preach yeah 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 yes i'm still like uh, for me a little confused now like huh? acha last time we heard like holy spirit for is for our believers right so here like uh, this is like uh, in 15 we, which we read it's a holy spirit fell upon them huh that they are not believers right right so um, like how yeah goes. see when peter is preaching they've already believed you got it the text doesn't say that they became believers or there was an altar call no peter is preaching about jesus seems like while they were listening itself they made the commitment to god in their hearts that is why the holy spirit fell on them because holy spirit cannot fall on unbeliever so they have become a believer that's the answer on the spot yeah on the spot it happened yeah okay so yes so uh, that was a small side note about being careful regarding encounters if there are at least two witnesses we can validate it but if there are no two witnesses it's difficult to go by the experiences of people all right so let's uh, continue from there in the experience of the jewish the the jewish believers of that time they believed god for their community to be saved but it was as if there's like an update that's happening in the work of the spirit in that generation till now they had not seen this the gospel being preached to the gentiles but when they see how god worked through peter and how the holy spirit was poured upon the gentiles they literally had to update themselves or step up with what the holy spirit is doing in their times was it in line with the word of god the gospel being preached to the gentiles was it in line with the word of god yes do we have any scripture to say that yeah abraham that you'll be a blessing to the nations all the families of the earth will be blessed uh, we could even go back to acts 18 you shall be my witnesses judea samaria you know, ends of the earth so it's scriptural but in terms of the experience of the believers there's something new that's happening okay so we must be open we must be open to the way that god is working he may do things in a different way but also remember that it will be aligned to his word he will not do anything outside his word so we can't look at a, a particular phenomenon which is not in the bible and validate it we can't so as long as it's in the bible if god is moving in a new way it's acceptable that's what happened among the jews it may have been difficult for the jews at that time because till now they were the ones who who were uh, the focus but now the gentiles also are coming to know christ so it it would have been difficult change is always difficult but we have to accept the progress that is happening in the kingdom of god now let's continue we will look at uh, how the work is expanding into other regions see initially we saw the apostles doing the ministry we saw time of persecution when um, saul had an encounter then we switched to the ministry of peter we saw with regard to dorcas and anias how uh, you know he he ministered to them supernaturally and then peter preaching to cornelius but around this time the work was also spreading to other parts of the region okay uh, so that's what that's where we are going to right now from verse 19 
we read that those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. So till that time, they didn't know that the gospel can be preached to the Gentiles. And yet, whatever they knew, they were obedient to do it. So they were preaching. Persecution took them to other places. So when persecution happens, what is the uh, logical end that you know we we think of? We may think that okay, persecution is happening. The church no longer is functional. Everyone's scattered. The work will stop. But the work is continuing. We see that people went to Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word. It says, so that's the beauty. The word continued to be preached and they continued to do the work of God. Verse 20, some of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene who when they had come to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists preaching the Lord Jesus. So now what's happening? There are some people from Cyprus, they've come to Antioch of Syria and they are preaching to those people. And the hand of the Lord was with them and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. So in essence, what's happening is there is a church that has now come together because of the preaching of whom? What are the names of the people who are preaching? Who is preaching? Some of the believers, what are their names? Acts 11, verse 19 to 21. They preached. They got scattered after the persecution of Stephen. But my question is, what are their names? No, it doesn't say. They, they preached to the Greek-speaking Jews, but who is preaching? What are their names? Anyone online? What are the names of the people preaching in Antioch of Syria? Hey, Jacqueline, uh, just give me a moment, Jacqueline. I know you're saying something, but we can't hear anything. Yeah. Uh, Jacqueline, could you please try again? Pastor, is it Barnabas and Saul? Okay. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. We can hear you now. No, I just asked if it Barnabas and Saul. Barnabas and Saul? Uh, no, answer is no because we don't see their names written there. So who is preaching? All right, don't worry about it because the names are not there. <laughs> we can sit all day and you will not find anything because the names are not there. What is the point? The point is churches were established by believers who are not even named. That's amazing. The way the church of Jerusalem was equipped, trained, you make disciples, they went everywhere and they were still preaching. So many churches were established around that time. Who established them? We don't know. But that's wonderful because it's like nameless and faceless individuals are going and establishing churches. Today, we have churches, right? 
what if our young people uh, go out uh, finding a job somewhere have we equipped them well enough that wherever they go they can preach about jesus who knows like the believers it just says uh, some of them were from cyprus and cyrene and when they had come to antioch spoke to the hellenists preaching the lord jesus who knows our believers okay can probably do the same thing like the believers of cyprus and cyrene they go and preach to someone and then verse 21 says a great number believed and turned to the lord meaning the establishing of churches it's happening there is no peter there is no john there is no any of those apostles names but sometimes god can even use ordinary believers to establish a church or plant a church as a one off thing you know it's not like they may continue to do it every time but it can happen and god can use simple believers like you and me to establish a church and the church of antioch is a very notable church we are going to read more about it so a notable church established by which leader no name by some believer that's all okay that's amazing god is using every single person do we know of any other simple believer who was used by god for a mighty work recently this few chapters ago is it philip yeah the the volunteers in the church yeah that i we accept that anyone else you know who's like an ordinary believer but god called him to go and minister to somebody who's powerful philip uh Not okay Not philip him. how about ananias oh, Anana, ananias yes, yes 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 what about him see he's just an ordinary believer in damascus but god is working through him so this is how god works he can work through every believer at different levels uh we notice that ananias and these believers from cyprus and cyrene seem to have some amazing assignments uh, and that's so encouraging we all must only continue to obey god and you know we never know what god might do in and through our lives all right so now there is a multitude coming together they believe a great number they are believing they are turning to the lord so the church uh, in antioch is uh, in its initial stages of being established so verse 22 then news of these things came to the ears of the church in jerusalem don't you think the church in jerusalem is like they are keeping an eye on everyone everything peter why did you go to the gentiles peter has to explain so it's like an apostolic in the next semester we will study about apostolic ministry where uh, the church is breaking into new regions but at the same time there is something known as apostolic governance meaning they they take care of all the churches what is going on in the body of christ what is going on in the network of our churches so the church of jerusalem is like headquarters different things are happening but the church of jerusalem is providing leadership the leading from the front they are taking care of the different uh, needs of various churches so when peter went to cornelius's uh, house to minister he had to explain now what is happening church of antioch they've heard oh there is a nice church established in antioch of syria so what do the leaders of the church of jerusalem decide they sent out barnabas to go as far as antioch what is their task headquarters or you know the apostolic base as you know some people uh, use the terminology their task is to ensure a strong spiritual equipping of every small unit that rises up so earlier philip went to samaria and they sent peter and john peter and john you go now you teach them the things that they may not know because disciples as the term says disciples we must equip people 
in the word of god make them more like jesus train them in all the things that's what jesus said right what is great commission go preach and at the same time teach them all the things that i taught you that's how they are doing it so they have to go teach and then they have to lead them into water baptism lead them into holy spirit baptism which is the normal pattern that they had so now to the church of antioch let's not get confused there are many antiochs we will read about other antiochs also so don't get confused this is antioch of syria so there is a city antioch it is in the place called syria so antioch of syria they sent barnabas and when barnabas came he saw the grace of god on the church he was glad and encouraged them that with purpose of heart they should continue with the lord so barnabas as a leader he comes to help the church now move up initial stages wonderful believers did they were preaching and you know many come, came together and they were turning to the lord but now barnabas is helping strengthen the church further so he comes and he sees there is a grace of god on the church so the work of god that's how a church is established right it's not a human work god is working among the people and when barnabas sees that he's very happy and he encourages them and he says look we need to keep going forward we need to progress so continue boldly with the lord and the scripture also teaches us about the man that barnabas was was 24 do we know anything more about uh, barnabas earlier did we read anything about barnabas yeah his name means encourager what else did we see he was very generous in uh, I mean, yes I, i think he set the tone tone for giving of resources and things correct so, correct so when we uh, when we read about ananias and sapphira around the, that time we read about barnabas also that he was a generous man he was giving to the church he was a levite so this much we know about barnabas he is an encourager he is probably from a very uh, rich and well to do family he is uh, in the tribe of uh, levi uh, and he was giving to the church what else are we going to learn about barnabas so verse 24 of acts 11 describes him a little bit more and it says for he was a he was a good man full of the holy spirit and of faith and a great many people were added to the lord do we read about any other people who were full of faith full of the holy spirit yes 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 so the pattern follows good people as leaders good meaning what good meaning having faith being full of the holy spirit and it also says he was a good man meaning uh, he probably had a, a good heart towards people to see them thrive uh, and to pour into their lives so it's important for the leadership of the church to be people of this kind full of the holy spirit full of faith uh, you know and uh, good goodness of heart when paul writes to timothy also he he will talk about you know good conscience when we want to lead people having a good conscience is important a good heart towards the people is important so thank god there were good leaders in the church that's how the church can thrive and we need good leaders so barnabas was that one nice leader that god sent to the church of antioch and thank god for for him now barnabas he realizes that this church needs a stronger leadership so what he does he tries to bring in other folk who can help in the work of the ministry he decides to bring saul you remember earlier when we talked about uh, uh, saul encountering god and then he was in the places of damascus then for 15 days he goes to jerusalem the apostles did not accept him but 
we read that it was Barnabas who spoke to the apostles and said, no, no, he's really a believer now. He's serving the Lord. Please regard him. So Barnabas was the one who uh, had a heart for Saul. Now in the church of Antioch, when he sees a need, we need more leaders here. What he does is he goes to Tarsus to find Saul. He decides that he can bring Saul here. Okay. So what does this tell us? It tells us that we need to have people in our hearts. And also as mentors and leaders, do we consider other, you know, people who are younger in the Lord, not necessarily by age, but maybe they're growing in the Lord. We are seeing them and God is using them. There is a grace of God on their lives to teach the word, to lead worship or, uh, you know, to lead the youth, something. We need to be like a Barnabas to help them and show them the way and say, okay, come join, join along, come alongside. Let's serve the Lord together. That is a Barnabas kind of a heart. Think about this. Barnabas could have said, oh, it's a very good church. It's a strong church. I'll be the only leader. I will rule over all the people. I don't care. He could have done that. But see the goodness of his heart. He realizes the people need stronger leadership. Who can I think of as a good leader? He suddenly thinks of Saul. There's a man who's been serving the Lord for all these years. How about I bring him? He can also be helpful in the ministry. And that could have been a training ground also for Saul, where you know he could have learned many things from Barnabas. But Barnabas gave Saul an opportunity. That's the point we are coming to. If Barnabas doesn't give Saul a chance, this is the only place we see the re-entry of Saul. If Barnabas did not give Saul a chance, I don't know what would have happened. So... It teaches us we must encourage other leaders, give them opportunities, raise them up, okay, bring them alongside. So verse 25, Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year, they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. So he knows he needs help. So he brings a leader and that leader is Saul. Their mindset is very clear. What is it? There is a gathering of believers. We need to establish them in the word. So for one year, they are teaching, teaching, teaching. What do you think they would have taught? What, are they, what is there to teach them? Yeah. About Jesus, yes. About Jesus. Then? His teachings, the teachings of Jesus, very good. What else was the early church teaching? Holy Spirit, yes. Yeah. The, both the baptisms and also the Old Testament scriptures because Jesus honored those scriptures. So whatever Jesus honored, they would have taught the believers. One year is a long time. So they are teaching them every way. You know, it's like this topic, that topic, whatever topic is necessary for them to be grounded in faith, they are teaching them. So today, you and I, let's say, we find a set of believers somewhere. We hear there are three, four people. They're gathering together. Believers are there. And uh, you're the only person uh, who can, who's close by and who can help. You know, no other churches are willing to help. What should we do? When we see a new set of believers like this, we need to teach them God's word. We're excited. Wow, they've become believers. That's nice, but that's only first step. Second step is we have to go we have to send somebody, appoint somebody, teach them, teach them, teach them. For one year, Saul and Barnabas, they are pouring out into the lives of the disciples. You know, later we will read, Church of Antioch is very powerful. 
okay that becomes the base church of saul but they worked hard to establish the disciples in the truth of god's word and the work of the holy spirit so this is what you and i must think of doing okay we too must equip and teach believers establish them in the word of god are uh, any questions yes ma'am the uh, the verse 26 the last line ah uh, and the disciples were first called christians in antioch yes so that is the first time right yes, so correct. like who called the disciple called themselves or any other huh. people them called them christians? i think other people seems like that disciples were first called christians in antioch yeah others would have called them earlier they were called as people of the way but this is the first time that term christians is used you don't ha huh, yeah no 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 problem about the second coming of christ uh, we can say at this anti i don't know i don't know uh, but going by the pattern of paul see later we will see in paul's missionary journey, journeys uh, he will come to a place called thessalonica in the second missionary journey okay it's a young church it's a new church but he will teach the church about second coming of christ so going by paul's pattern maybe they would have taught even though it's a young church they would have taught yeah okay so this is the first time they are identified as christians now they also are uh, this church of antioch it's becoming strong in the world it's uh, it has strong leadership by now because two good leaders you have barnabas and saul serving them this church will also become a giving church so they will work on uh, gathering money to send as relief to judea there is a prophecy that happens through a man called agabus okay so agabus his name is mentioned over here um, would someone like to read the passage from 27 to 30 and then i'll just uh, explain it and in these days yes. prophets came from jerusalem to antioch then one of the one of them named agabus stood up and showed by the spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world which also happened in the days of claudius mm. caesar caesar then the disciples each according to his ability determined it to send relief to the brethren dwelling in judea mm. this they also did and sent it to the elders by the hands of barnabas and saul yes okay so uh, what happens is this church in antioch is thriving so has the connection cut off from the headquarters no they are continuing to monitor see this is also a big lesson for us when uh, we establish churches sometimes we forget about them uh, they are doing well leave them leave them alone but the early church leaders were such that they were watching what what do they need do they need any teaching do they need any um, any other form of support so they are constantly sending people first barnabas came now they are sending agabus agabus is a prophet and it says prophets came from jerusalem to antioch why do you think they are sending prophets isn't it too early to send prophets nothing is too early they want a powerful work of the spirit in the church of antioch so maybe by now they have established uh, the people in the word of god in a strong way so they they think okay let them flow in the gifts of the spirit also let them be equipped so they say okay prophets a team of prophets you go minister in the church of antioch so the prophets go 
and when they come there is a notable prophet his name is agabus one of them agabus stood up and showed by the spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world which also happened in the days of claudius caesar he is not a believer prophesying because the bible already says he is a prophet meaning he is in the office of a prophet he comes and what he does is see usually when somebody is in the office of a prophet the kind of revelations that they get are you know they impact regions large regions and people groups so god spoke to agabus that there is going to be a famine throughout the world so no wonder as a prophet god is giving him that revelation and he shares that revelation to the church in antioch but look at this church okay here is a revelation that famine is going to come what do you think the people what do we expect the people to do with this kind of information famine is going to come prophet is saying famine is coming throughout the world generally the people store for themselves store for themselves okay the that's true yeah here they are sending relief yes yes so usually when a piece of information comes like that we only think about ourselves now it's likely that uh, uh, i we don't know what more agabus added to it but the hearts of the people in the church of antioch were moved doesn't it sound like a good church they are excited about the word they have good leaders and now prophets have come and when they hear this prophecy they want to be a giving church they decide how about we help the brethren in judea so they they determine to send relief each according to his ability again this is beautiful that simply says the leaders are not demanding hey give you should give so much you should give so much what if they can't give see the church is never demanding even when we go back to like acts 4 acts 5 they were coming and giving at the feet of the apostles peter asks ananias and sapphira it was in your hand to give to give right you are the ones nobody told you how much to give according to your ability so the leaders are such they are not demanding anything how much a person can give let them give they are good leaders so same thing here they want to send relief to the churches in judea for the brethren in judea but they are giving each one as per his ability and they send the relief through the hands of the elders barnabas and saul even this is very important you know why there is wisdom in the way they are handling money imagine if they get the money right and they're just giving anybody you go anyone from the congregation you take so much money you go give it to the uh, brethren if something goes wrong who's answerable we can't right we can't just trust anyone so especially in the matters of money when we see the way the early church leaders dealt with resources there's a lot of wisdom they choose reliable men barnabas and saul they are leaders they are men of god they have a proved track record of integrity so the money which was gathered up in the church of antioch it is being sent in the hands of the elders barnabas and saul we have to think all this is wisdom how we deal with the way something very important something very uh, precious like you know money or uh, something expensive we we need to think of dealing with it in such a way that the church or the leadership should not be questioned see now you can't question them because Saul and Barnabas know how to handle the money they would have faithfully taken the money and handed it over to the brethren who needed it so there's no um uh what can i say nobody can blame okay 
Right. Any any thoughts or questions? I realize we have only three minutes left. Ma'am. Ha. Huh? So we saw in Acts chapter five like Ananias and Sapphira. Yes. So the apostle said like, "What is your ability? You give." Yes. But like, my thought is like this: they give Ananias and Sapphira. They give. Ah. Huh? But way they like murder like. Yeah, die. why did they die? You no, know? so we we told that uh, earlier, uh, Francis. We said that one is they lied. So that's what Peter says. Why did you lie to the Holy Spirit? What they did is they sold their property and they kept little bit behind, but they lied, saying we gave everything. So because it was lies, that was the problem. That was the major problem. And secondly, we said whenever. there is a revival or a greater glory of god the judgment is severe so because in such great glory of god they lied like this they died immediately yeah so that's does it answer okay great yeah sure okay so we uh, any anything all right okay then we will stop here and uh, we can continue with acts 12 so there's lot of things we can learn and as we are serving in our own churches and as a lord uh, i'm sure uh, when i look at you guys I, i can see there are going to be there's so much work that uh, god wants each one of us to do churches that he wants us to help leaders he wants us to raise up and that's why let's learn and learn well from uh, the book of acts let's close with prayer can anyone help me please Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful time, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We have studied about all things, Father. Your Word of God, Lord. Jesus, help us to teach, uh, help us to learn more, and help Nench Mam to teach uh, more. And Father, give us wisdom to understand more, and we can learn more about how to raise leader. All things, Father, as we study. Thank you so much for all things. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 And thank you, Nikhil. Thank you everyone.